residents. And quite honestly, as landlords, if we didn't have residents, we wouldn't be in business. So what does that mean? And what are we seeing in the marketplace? Because just like in the um, buying arena, we're also seeing a shift in the resident side and the rental. Um, so 34% of the marketplace is actually made up of single family homes. Um, I know it seems like we see more apartment buildings and multifamily going up, but the single family home marketplace is still really strong. Um, and this 34% of rental properties being single family homes actually houses nearly 42% of the market. So you're looking at 45 million people. And um, this is actually coming from a study through Buildium, which is a third party um, company that has a lot of insights into the rental property industry as a whole. They do a lot of surveys of landlords, management companies, residents, et cetera, and they always are compiling industry data. So the data that we're bringing to you is accurate, hard, fast data. Um, and right now, they're looking like single family homes are poised to meet the needs of the demographics as things are coming over the next couple of years, which feeds into Chrysia saying, hey, we're going to have these single family homes that might be coming. And, you know, you that's still a good investment. And so what they're finding is that the rental market is still strong because as Tyler and Chrysia both talked about, the market adjusting, interest rates going up, somebody that may have qualified in the early 2020, they no longer qualify. So they have to stay renting or they have, they don't, they're not able to buy. So as that continues to happen, there will always be renters. That market is never going away. So this was interesting. Up until 2019, the top um, reason, which is still the case, but the percentage has dropped as to why people don't buy a home is because it's financially prohibitive. But they're seeing that um, shift where people that maybe could buy a home, they don't want to buy a home because they don't want all the responsibilities that come with home ownership. Having a landscaper, having a tree trimmer, all the maintenance that comes with owning a home when you're a resident, that goes to the owner. And so some people just really don't want the home ownership. So that also is kind of coming up as the finances drop down. So how did we get to kind of where we are today with a rental housing shortage, which we still are experiencing? So obviously we're all aware of the major mortgage crisis that happened. Um, a long time ago, it wasn't that long ago, but 2007 to 2010, which caused a lot of people to lose their homes, which caused a massive influx of renters. So your first surge that you saw were people with children, they just kind of left their home, lost them, whatever the case may be, and they went into single family homes. If you have family, children, obviously a single family home uh, fits your needs a little bit better than an apartment, something like that. And the astonishing 84% of the renters actually were families with kids. Um, and then we saw in 2020, a second surge. Um, 2020, we at Management One in all the 17 years that I've been there have never been able to tell somebody I don't have any homes for rent we have nothing. Um, and so we saw that surge come through um, and it is kind of leveling out now um, and prices are adjusting as well. Uh, kind of coming back to pre-2020, we're seeing a market similar to what we did in 2019. But who owns the most? Well, the mortgage crisis allowed um, corporations to come in, big conglomerates, and buy up some of the marketplace. That has kind of settled down a little bit because they actually own about 3 to 5% of the single-family homes. There is a new trend that's happening, which is build to rent firms. So much like we have a, a build to own, they build to what I might want in a home, granite countertops, this and that, builders are building to suit renters. So this is a new trend. You can go in and say, hey, I can't afford a home. 
the builder says, okay, you can rent it essentially from the builder. Um, and they'll build it to suit what you want. Um, and that's actually a trend that we're seeing and they currently own about five to 10%. But individual owners such as yourself still hold 95 to 97% of the single family homes in the uh, marketplace. So basically the key takeaway is it's still an excellent time to buy as Chrystia and Tyler were alluding to. Um, it's a great time uh, with the Bank of America programs. We were talking yesterday as a team that even though it's for new home buyers, if you have children or grandchildren that are looking to start getting into the marketplace, do a first time home buyer and then maybe they can expand later. Um, there will always be a need for renters um, and so growing your generational wealth through real estate is still a great opportunity um, and there, it will continue to be so for decades to come. So that is mine. Ron, what do you want to add? Well, I think uh, people are uh, a little taken back a little bit with the interest rate increase and everybody puts the brakes on. Um, I have always went the other way when the market goes uh, like uh, what I call following this sheep to slaughter, so to speak, is uh, I've always went the other way in my career. And even though it can be a little nerve wracking right now to maybe get a 6% when you could have got a three and a half, you know, a year ago, uh, I look at it as an opportunity because we've seen the market throttle down a little bit. And so it really becomes an opportunity, you know, to buy it maybe at a better price. So maybe you're paying a little higher interest rate you know, but maybe you're not paying an additional 50,000 to buy that property. So really you're just trading dollars and eventually the market will cycle, you know, and the interest rates will adjust. And when that time comes, then you go ahead and refinance. Years ago, when we had people buy eight, nine, 10% interest rates, okay, we never dreamed that they would be as low as two, two and a half, three. Uh, but some of those people that thought they would take X years to retire, they found out they could retire five to seven years earlier because they refinanced them back to a three and a four and the houses got paid off more quickly. Okay, but if they would have waited until the time was right to buy, uh, you're going to be waiting a long time. Okay, so to me, being where I've been in this industry uh, for three and four decades of seeing interest rates as high as 17 and a half percent, six percent doesn't even phase me and really it shouldn't phase you either. OK, because you also got to look at it after you write off that extra interest on your income taxes. What is your net takeaway? Maybe your rate is now four point seven five because you got more tax write off. So you got to look at the whole picture. Just don't look at the interest rate. So, so I'm going to say something and I'm going to play a little bit of devil's advocate here, because right now, as we're seeing, interest rates are going up and demand is falling. There's no way we can actually say otherwise, the data shows it and you know the numbers, even if ever so slightly are adjusting. But I went to a meeting with the um, Association of Realtors last week and there was an elected official there that was talking about housing and the shortage of housing that we have in California. As of right now, we are hundreds of thousands of units short for the population that California has. Now, with that being said, uh, there is a huge push for ADUs, which are, which are the granny houses, that people are building the granny houses in the back. So that's going to definitely meet some of that demand that, that we're short. I mean, that, that supply that we're short. But in the bigger scheme, they're really pushing for smaller single family residences to be built because even with the migration um, of, of people moving out of California, we still are really, really short with the houses that are being built over the next decade for the population growth that we have. So I think it's a great opportunity because if you're looking at prices adjusting and having some sort of a balance off, like Tyler said, then I think that perhaps starting to look at your portfolio and where you have money sitting and you find an opportunity where the rents to purchase price are actually checking off and you're balancing out that cash flow then I think it actually opens up more doors. Um, the interest rate is, for the most part, temporary, um, as most people believe that you know they will go down, especially if a recession comes in full force. But um, but yeah, I think of it as an opportunity to start looking at your portfolio, start looking at where your finances are, 
what kind of rent, what areas you want to move into and start building that, continuing to build that generational well. Let me add one other thing to uh, some of the clients I've talked to, they felt like, well, I can't invest in California anymore because it doesn't work. It actually does work because your rental rates in California are just through the roof, where in other parts of the country, even though they're higher, they're not as high as California. So you may have a higher price, but you also have a higher rent. And so those offset each other. But unfortunately, we always focus on the interest rate. <laughs> we never look at the rental rate and, and the tax write-offs and all these things. So I just encourage everybody to take a deeper look. As I call, you know, look under the hood. Just don't look at how shiny the car is, but look under the hood and really get into the weeds. And when you do, you find out that this interest rate going from four to six is, is not anything earth shattering. Okay, so... Okay.